Okay, you're good to go. Am I being heard? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, continuing on, I'm going to now relate to Council Procedure Bylaw 692 from 2017. Number four has application of rules of procedure. First one, the provisions of this bylaw govern the proceedings of council, council of the whole, commissions, and all standing and select committees of council as applicable. Two, in cases not provided for under the bylaw, the 11th edition of the Robert's Rules of Order apply to the proceedings of council, committee of the whole, and council committees to the extent that those rules are A, applicable in the circumstances, and B, not inconsistent with the provision of this bylaw or the community charter. Number 17 lays out the format which must be followed for an agenda for any of those meetings. I had one question because when I first came in as the chairperson was that the committee had decided to put another heading in and it, it sounded like I'm the bad guy took it out. I'm not, it's the law, the rules that took it out. As some of you know, I'm a bit of a stickler for doing things according to the rules and regulations and years ago had accepted the fact that probably someone a lot smarter than me had drafted official documents. Getting on now with the December 15th, 2021 meeting. This was my first meeting as a chair designate. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I'm not a big fan of Zoom, but that is probably because I am not as technically advanced as a lot of you here this evening. It was good to see so many familiar faces and I knew Former Councillor Leach had done a good job and picked well. During the meeting, I passed on several points which I thought would assist the committee with achieving its mandate. Some were accepted and some were not. One point which I did get across, and that was using a nominal role to ensure all members had a chance to speak on each topic and after each speaker. The village recovery manager provided an update at this meeting on the short-term recovery plan and answered any and all questions from the members. The village recovery manager then provided a short presentation on communications and say that each time, each time the short-term recovery plan is updated, she will email the committee chairperson a copy for armored transmittal to the members. The village director of development provided a short presentation on the official community plan and fielded questions from the members. The meeting then adjourned. January the 5th, 2022 meeting. Terms of reference were presented and the committee members decided to rewrite them and bring them in to the next meeting, the 19th of January. A subcommittee was struck to look after this, chaired by member McCann. Next, the village recovery manager spoke about the interagency update on recovery meetings and wanted to know if any member was interested in attending or would they just rather receive the minutes. Receiving the minutes was a preferred method and the village recovery manager stated they will be passed on to the chairperson as soon as she was in possession of them for onward transmittal. She made sure also that everyone knew that she had no control over the production of these minutes and would send them out as soon as she received them. The village project manager provided an excellent overview of his role and the village with the village and answered several questions from the members. Member McGuire made three separate motions for recommendations to be presented at the next regular council meeting. 
They are as follows. And I will speak to, uh, to them at the end of uh, my report in the official capacity. Number one, that the Citizens Advisory Select Committee recommends to Council that Building Bylaw 750 be amended to remove any reference to Step Code 5 and replace it with Step Code 3. The Director of Planning and Development was asked to provide any technical data which may assist the members before the vote was taken. The vote was taken and was unanimous in favor of the motion. I have a note. Three members were interested in seeing more fire resistant material included. It is recommended that Council refer this aspect of the draft bylaw 750 back to the committee for further information and recommendation. Second motion put forward by member McGuire. That reference to a district energy system in building bylaw 750 be deleted. Once again, director of planning and development was asked to provide any technical data which might assist the members before the vote was taken. The vote was unanimous in favor of the motion. Third motion put forward by member McGuire, that building bylaw 750 be reviewed to remove references that do not apply to the village of Lytton proper. For example, reference to natural gas, storm water from private property to storm drain and other items, pardon me, other items not pertaining to the village of Lytton. The Director of Planning and Development was asked to provide any technical data which might assist the members before the vote was taken. The vote was unanimous in favor of the motion. I want to thank Director of Planning and Development for his input to ensure that all members fully understood the motions prior to voting. Moving on next. Member Baxter brought forward the fact that renters from the village of Lytton were still not receiving the necessary care from the Red Cross. The village recovery manager will be in Lytton the week of 17 January 2022 and has agreed to meet with Member Baxter and the Red Cross representative and hopefully get this worked out. Chairperson Hay addressed a perceived problem from one of the personnel outside of the village boundaries. He had tried to have committee members reach out to residents whom they knew and get their contact information. This was negatively met, and some adverse correspondence being received by one member who approached their known friends. Some people from outside the village were upset with Chairperson Hay, and he explained the reason for his con for the correspondence and apologize to those whom he may have offended. Lastly, breaking with tradition, Chairperson Hay had noticed that MLA Taggart was in attendance and before joining, adjourning the meeting, asked her if she would like to address the committee, which she did. The, the meeting was then adjourned. So getting back to the recommendations, and my recommendation is that Council put these in a separate thing away from the report to be looked at later, is that there are three recommendations brought forward from the Citizens Advisory Select Committee be taken into consideration by the Council. Also, I would like Council to make a motion to return to the committee to find out about the fire retardant material, which was asked for by some of our members. Thank you. So um, under section 29, 
um, the council uh, can take a series of actions and um, I would like to uh, postpone its consideration of the recommendations until we get more but, uh, before the second reading. So, um, to vote on that or? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, need a motion on it. So, uh, I can't make the Okay, motion. so I'd like to make the motion that we postpone its consideration of the, of the recommendation until we get more before second reading. I'll second the motion. Is there any discussion? Councilor Haig, for those in, in attendance and if any of the committee members are there, I am sure we're going to be bringing a several more or many more uh, recommendations in regarding this bylaw. And the reason uh, I've, I've suggested we put it in is at one time we'll get our experts together, we'll present all these to them and make the decision instead of picking away at them like a sparrow feeding. And the last I need is, is that motion to go back to the committee for the fire resistant stuff. I'll write a confirmation for you. Um, I'll make the motion that the recommendation the, for the fire resistant uh, materials uh, be referred back to the committee. Thank you. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. So that is the end of the report. Yes. Okay. So we're on to, um, we had created a leadership and policy uh, for recovery select committee. It um, actually um, performed its functions when it came to temporary housing. And the recommendation now is, is to uh, put it into abeyance uh, until it is uh, needed. And that's uh, in, uh, in pages 38 to 42. I believe that is the wording that they used. I'll make the motion. Yeah. Councilor Hay, second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. So then we're on to the uh, uh, calendar of events. The Citizens Advisory Committee, their next meeting. Uh, oh, sorry, it is not going to be January the 5th. January 19th. Yeah. January the 19th. Um, um, and that is the conclusion to the public portion of this meeting. We will be going into a closed meeting under Section 90-1A, Personal uh, Information and labor relations, and that's 90-1C. Councilor, hey, I make a motion we move into a closed meeting in three minutes once we shut everything down. All right, thank you everyone for joining us uh, this evening, and that concludes the public portion of the meeting. Thank you very much. Isn't the calendar of events, shouldn't that include uh, the community meeting that's coming up? Uh, yes, we have, a, we have a community meeting on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Thank you. I can change that. 775 of all. I think I'll look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Maybe need to do a share. Go on in here.